Hello you, this is Darkon633, and today I'm bringing you a review of the Transformers Generations Voyager Age of Extinction Autobot Hounds. Now, Hasbro's been kind of iffy in terms of the amount of accessories the Transformers has in the last few years. Especially since most of them only come with like one handheld weapon, maybe a few and other things, or maybe some swords. However, Hasbro did a really good job and put a whole amount of weaponry on this guy for Hound. Now, he's got a three-barrel cannon. These shotguns, these smaller grenade guns. He's even got this axe, which looks really nice. Now, and he's got two small pistols. So pretty much he's armed to the bone. Cool part is, is that these guns actually can fit in any of the deluxe type transformers we have in this line. So for example, if you want something like crosshairs here, Let's just take out like this random shotgun. It should be able to fit in his hand and yeah. So pretty much you could just arm, just pretty much let him borrow a whole bunch of armory for him. So it's pretty nice that what Hound has given us for uh, the Age of Extinction line and in Transformers in general. Now we'll take a quick look at the box. We have a nice profile shot of Hound, which is voiced by John Goodman, which is Pretty cool that we got him to voice a Transformer for once. Uh, looking at the back, we got a whole bunch of the pro other designs. I know they becomes an Osh Kosh defense truck thing. I'm not really sure how you pronounce that. But anyways, we'll take a look at the bio here. It says Autobot Hound might only be a single soldier, but he prides himself on being able to do jobs of 10. Whether the objective is a tactical deployment, recon mission, or infiltration and sabotage, Howen can get the job done. Heavily armored, he isn't about to back down from an Olaf fireflight if one comes his way. Some bots may see that as versatility as showing off. To Howen, it's all in the line of duty. So, it's overall a pretty nice design here. Just to show a little bit of size comparison with some of the other characters in the line for the Voyagers. We have Galvatron here, which I reviewed earlier. And also Vagemon Optimus, which I reviewed earlier as well. So although he's on the little bit of the small side, it really works for the character and I think it works well to match him with the other characters of the line. So now we're going to go on with their, the articulation points. Now for articulation, his head can go 360. It's got a waist articulation which can go 360 so nothing is hindered on that so that's good. Even with the gun attached it can pretty much go 360 if you wish to. His arms are not really a ball joint. I'm not sure how what to exactly call this but it does allow more room. It's like a pin joint actually. You can see these big pins on his shoulders. It can go front and forward as well and one of his gun swap which I'll take off anyway. His upper arm has a swivel. It's got a single, actually no, he's got a double, somewhat double, a semi-double uh, elbow joint. Because this one only can go about that far, and that's mostly turns to transformation and other things. And his wrists can kind of turn, but not much due to the way that the rubber is made, so. And then, for other points of articulation, his legs are also on those same type of pin joint. Last full movement, single jointed knees, no, oh wait, no, yeah, he does have a swivel on his leg, and his feet can swivel as well, so, it's pretty nice. Now, to take a quick look at the actual weapons itself, we'll just take off everything. Includes the small pistols in his legs as well, which easily stores on the side there inside. We're going to take Hound off to the side and take a look at the individual weapons. So now, first we'll take a look at the biggest weapon of the bunch. Three barreled um, blaster. These weapons are actually extremely well molded and I really like how made a good design overall and as reported there's a part here which causes major stress marks as you can see there 
already have a big stress mark. Let me see if I can... Right there, there's like a big stress mark right there where the pin is. So unfortunately, that's just how the design was in the way of this thing could transform, since this actually has got two modes. We got the regular three-barrel mode, or if you wished, push this down, collapse it, and then make sure that you actually turn this piece first, collapse it, and then you have the flat kind of gun, and that's mostly for storage and actually for the second mode this has. So basically, the second mode, how to turn this into the second mode, all you need to do is take these pieces here, the grenade launchers, make sure that you peg them together since there's a hole at the end of each of the barrels just plug them in like that so now it looks like that there's also holes at the top of the barrel as well which attach to the pegs that are on the top there so it looks like that now for this what you're gonna do is collapse the handles for both of them and then on the side here, there's these, oh yeah, I always sometimes get confused. Actually, what you're supposed to do is keep it out like that. So that's where I get confused sometimes. So you actually just need to keep it out like that altogether. So now we're going to quickly peg these back on like normal. Now on the sides here, there's these little pegs there on the side of the gun. They'll fit into these little slots that are on the side of these larger, uh, larger uh, weapons here. They're slide in and peg in. So it looks like that so far. Now what you're going to do, sometimes that has a hard time staying on. But once you get that done, you're going to take the pegs here on the smaller pistols and connect them to the ends of the barrels there, both sides. Both of them. And then, to finish off the combined weapon mode here, all you need to do is take the knife, just plug it onto the front barrel there, and now you have the combined weapon which you can actually store in his hand pretty well if the things would stop popping off. That would be nice. There. And you can just plug it onto his hand, so now he's got a giant machete kind of giant blaster thing. So yeah, it's pretty crazy what this, what they design, what this thing can do. Now to transform him, actually what you're going to do first, since his vehicle mode can actually store all of his weapons, what you're going to have to do is now take this entire weapon apart. Back into its components. Now, what you're going to do is, now you're going to change this back into the flat mode. So you just pull this down, like that. Fold up this piece here. Lay it flat, so now it looks like that. And you take the solid pistols, and you just... Kind of just slots into the sides here, and you kind of peg in from these tiny little, uh... Cuts. And the gun itself slide into this little component that's right there on both sides. So now, if done properly, there's a lot of clearance in there, so sometimes you need to slide it in like that. So now it just pegs in like that on both sides. And now, this one has a little problem snapping into place times too, so. I don't know, I sometimes got some bad luck with these, but sometimes it's not bad, so... Okay, so that's it for, uh, now. Now what you're gonna do is... Open up the chest here, so now it reveals the top of the, the vehicle. Unclip the sides here. So it looks like that. Turn around. 
push out the wheels, snap it to place, and you just push the head in to the little slot there. Turn these arms around so now they face like that on both sides. Then you just slide them into the arms like that on both sides. Okay. Now what you do, is so you're gonna pull this entire leg down, so now it looks like that. As you can see there, it's slid down like that. And then, turn the feet, and then peg these legs together. So it looks like that. Then you just kind of slide these little, there's like a little, whole bunch of these little uh, pegs are on the side of his feet there, just slide them into the sides here. And once done properly, the entire side of the vehicle shall be done. So, do the same for the other side. Now before you do that, what you're gonna do is take off the hood piece here, like not take off, but push down. Make sure that it slides into the little hole there first, or else you won't be able to fit it in. So you do the same for the other side. Looks like that. Then you just peg everything together from the back. And then you just make sure that you align everything so that everything slots in properly. And then once you get that done, Hound will be in his vehicle mode. Now for Hound, his wheels can kind of turn. They sh they it's made of a hard plastic, so sometimes they turn, sometimes they don't. As you can see, the back wheel isn't really turning very well. But not too bad. Now for storage in this mode, what you do is take these guns and just like when you combine them into the other mode, there's also pegs on the other side of the vehicle and just peg them onto the side like this. So both of these go on the same side. So now it looks like th that. Now what you can do for the knife is that there's an actual peg down here any of these pegs are on the bottom. There's a bunch there. It's probably better to just peg it into right, something like right here. There's just enough clearance so that the wheels can still turn, even though you're pegging on the knife here, as you can see. It's pretty close to the edge there, but not quite there, so it's enough space in order for the wheels to still turn, so that's good. Now for the big gun, there's a bunch of holes that are on the side of the gun here. This thing actually faces down. They just fit onto the slots that are on the side of the vehicle mode here. So just kind of align them properly and then there you have the gun attached. And sometimes this also doesn't like to slot in all the way. So, Hound's got a whole bunch of QC problems on mine, where all over the things just like to pop off in this mode, and it's really annoying. I wish the QC issues weren't as bad as you can see here. And then finally, this is where it has the most problem. These pieces are actually supposed to fit onto the side here. But sometimes they like to pop off on their own, so they just kind of slide into the little space in between there. And they don't like to stay in very well either, so let's see if I can get this on to stay in the review. So now we got him fully in his vehicle mode. I'm going to move the camera so you can see him.
there you have Hound, completely in his vehicle mode with all the weapons attached to the side. So it's a pretty much an armored truck, like a military truck, and it looks really nice overall. To transform back, all you need to do is remove all the components from the side of his vehicle mode. And then, you're going to open up the back here so that it allows it to open up pretty much everything in its entire body. You're going to unpeg these down, so look like that. Then you're going to open this up. Like that. Peg them back together. Snap into place. Pull up the arms from the slots here. So like that. Slide them out. And then turn them around so that the wrists Wrists face forward, and I don't know what happened. This is odd. Oh, oh that's why. That's right. So it looks like that now. You just put it in horse and other face like that. Pick the entire leg down like this. Turn the feet. Push out the wheels. Pull out this entire panel from the back so that you can free the head. And then fold that over here. Push in the wheels. And peg everything back together. And there you have Hound back in his robot mode. So Hound is a very impressive design, although it's very simplistic like some of the other designs of the toy line. But I rather enjoy the stuff that he has to offer with the weaponry. The design's still pretty nice, even though it's simplistic transformation and so on. But, well, I think Hasbro did a very nice job designing this toy. So, I highly recommend it. Anyways, please comment, subscribe, check out Toko News, Hirotaku, Raiju Neon, and the other channels down below. And I'll see you YouTube. Bye.